Hi, I'm Cisco Morris, and we're here in beautiful Canmore in Alberta, Canada. And in the next half hour, we're going to talk about construction techniques that can help make your house more resistant to wildfire. Don't wait until you smell smoke. There are things you can do to better protect your urban interface home from a wildfire. Over the next half hour, we'll be talking to fire prevention professionals in Prince George, British Columbia, Canmore, Alberta, and Shelter Bay, Washington about fire-resistant home construction and landscape techniques. So hang around whatever you do, because we're going to have a lot of fun and you're going to see some beautiful homes. up that mountain that third time in a row. <laughs> All right. Hey, Stu, how you doing? Good to see you. Hey, I'm going all the way up that mountain because you're the expert on <laughs> home construction that's resistant to wildfire. How about give me a tour and tell me how you did it? Sure, why don't we go for a walk? Cool as could be. Stu, I, I can't help but notice how interesting the back of your house is. Can you tell me about some of the fire resistant uh, products you use here? Well, what we wanted to do was uh, we wanted to make the yard uh, easily maintainable as well as get fire smart landscaping in the area. So we have green maintained lawn. Uh, we have a, uh, a rock buffer. Uh, right around it so that fire can't approach the house. Uh, yeah, you no weeds in and, there too. Yeah, well, you know, it helps with that, obviously. And then we also have um, some gravel, uh, which is uh, for two reasons. Number one, the dog, uh, and number one, or number two, fire, you know. Uh, yeah, you never want to put things underneath your deck that are flammable, huh? Well, exactly, you know. So if you look over there, we've got the canoe. Um, and uh, the firewood pile as far away as possible. Far away from the home. Um, and uh, yeah, exactly. Nothing flammable um, underneath it. And that's for fire. And, and now that wall, is that stucco? Yep. We've got the uh, non flammable stucco. Well, not only there, but all the way around the house. And, uh, and then um, a little bit of wood to make it look better, but yeah, not too much wood. Not too much. Yeah, what about under the eaves? Is it important to have something under the eaves that isn't? that isn't flammable? We've got the non-combustible um, uh, soffit material, uh, uh, which is metal actually, or um, underneath the soffit. And, uh, and then uh, that actually, not only is it non-combustible, it's basically low maintenance, you know? I love your wild area here. You know, you've got these great wildflowers, this wonderful vetch. You've got those Indian paintbrushes. I've always wanted those in my garden. I can't grow them. You're so lucky. But I would imagine this could be a fire hazard. Well, you know, for both uh, slope uh, and uh, season, um, in the spring and the fall, this may burn. If in it dries the summer, up. When it's nice and green like this, it's not bad. Oh, um, so no worry for the no summer when it's bad. green, yeah. but when it dries up and turns brown, which I imagine it does, then it could be a fire hazard. Exactly, and that's exactly why we have sprinklers hidden in the uh, the grass here. Is Look at that these. Uh, we'll hook up the hoses if the fire is here, and we'll sprinkler this in the spring and fall, and then uh, spread water. Uh, wouldn't it just kind of hit? Wouldn't that? Wouldn't this block the water here? Well, it does. This does block the water. But you know, what we've done is we've just put them here. Uh, both my wife and I know that when the fire is coming, hook the hose up, pull out the sprinkler, oh, and just put it right there. Wow, that's So that cool. then it's open and it's spreading more. Because you really need that because fire does move up hill faster, right? Very fast. Yep. Yep. Hey, I got to ask you about this plant. I heard it's called a buffalo berry. It is. Now, I heard that that attract, the berries can attract bears. Well, some uh, 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 some of these may have, uh, may attract bears depending on if they're female or male and carry be uh, uh, berries or not. Uh, Are we talking like you know? grizzly bear here? Yes, they could attract grizzly bears. Oh, la la. Well, listen, I think we'll go walk over to the other side of the house. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for showing me all this stuff. Oh, la la. Come on, let's go to the front. Wow, your house 
is as beautiful inside as it is outside. I can't believe it. Hey, I've heard you're a great cook. How about fixing us up a Brussels sprout casserole for lunch? <laughs> My favorite. Well, I think the best you probably get from me is a grilled cheese sandwich. Well, now, if you're not a good cook, I don't know if I trust you uh, burning it on the stove, because I think a lot of fires in houses start on the stove, don't they? Well, they do. Um, and, uh, you know, we talked today about doing the work from the outside uh, and wildfire coming into your house. But I think one of the other things people need to keep in mind is that fire often starts in the house and spreads outside into the forest and threatening that forest around your home or threatening the other houses uh, in your area. Um, so you want to make sure that what you're doing both within your house and outside your house is not only going to protect your house from fire coming in but from fire leaving your house as well. Well you know that makes sense to me. Fire's fire. A ca uh, casual cigarette left on something, bad wiring can occur. So the kind of things we talked about outside are, you know, everybody isn't going to have maybe the 30 feet of clearance, but if you take most of the precautions, you can make a big difference in making your home resistant to fire and your landscape. Yep, and I, I think the key here in, in doing this is keep in mind that it all starts at your home. And that's where you need to start doing your work from. Now, in case a fire does occur, I imagine it's really important to have a good evacuation plan. Yeah, I think a, uh, uh, one of the big things is, is to have a good evacuation plan. What are you going to take with you when you go? Uh, what's the important stuff? And uh, uh, where are you going to go to? Um, and how many people are you taking with you? Uh, so they, you know, they need to have that evac plan put together. So how can people find out uh, how to do these things that we've talked about today? Well, I'd recommend they go to their local fire officials, and that could be either their local fire department or it could be their local forest fire agency. Perfect point. And as long as you're out there doing that, talk to home contractors. Many of them know about the fire-resistant materials. And don't forget to talk to your landscape professional because you want to have a beautiful landscape that's fire resistant as well. Now today we're talking about fire resistant construction and landscaping and I've got a great guest, Kelly Gilday of the Prince George Fire and Rescue. If anybody knows about these kind of things, it's you there, Kelly. <laughs> and boy, do we have living proof right here. We're right at the edge of the forest, right in the forest, really. We've got living proof that you can have a magnificent landscape and a beautiful home right in the forest. You bet, Cisco. It's a great example of how people have put some forethought into their planning of their home in the forested areas. You know, Kelly, I'm, I know why this is such a spectacular landscape here. One of the things, you know, the real key for landscaping is contrast. So you don't want to have two deciduous trees together. You don't want all the same color. You don't want forms to look alike. That's boring, you know. You hardly ever put numbers, uh, even numbers of plants in. So look at this beautiful, this looks like a, a little crab apple to me. And so you've got this deciduous plant and then you've got little conifers uh, dotted all around. And it looks to me like uh, they're not so close to the house. We don't have to worry about that because Conifers are a little more prone to burn, aren't they, than uh, deciduous plants? You bet they are. So even though they've got them in here, it does reduce the risk quite a bit by spreading it out, like you're saying, yeah. Cool. And what about this uh, beautiful, look at these marsh marigolds along the stream. Oh, la, la. And you know what I love? Look at how they contrasted the yellow with the bright red of that saxifrage. Holy cats, is that what you do at your house? Not quite, but I uh, do like the stream there for a bit of a fire break. It hey, that's really true. Well. It makes yeah. a wonderful fire break. Huh? And check out this artwork in the garden. You know, this is the kind of thing people forget. We've got these beautiful stones here. But check out, is that a cool piece of art or what? Yeah, it really is. It really adds to the aesthetics of the art. And a walkway like this, is this making a fire break? 
your bed. Anything, anytime you've got a non-combustible thing like a walkway or some dirt areas, whatever, it does provide a bit of a fire break so the ground fire will stop in those areas or should stop anyway. Have you ever seen a more beautiful contrast than this? No, Cisco, it's absolutely beautiful in that. And I understand the fire breaks and stopping the fire from getting to the home, but how would I get a garden this beautiful? I just don't know enough about the plants and the flowers. You know, that's a good point, Kelly. Not everybody is an expert gardener. That's why you want to contact your landscape professional, either a landscape designer or someone that's just really good at putting in gardens. And they're the folks that could come help you put in a spectacular garden like this. Although, after a couple more lessons with me, you're going to be the expert of the whole town. <laughs> well, Cisco, this has been great, and I can't wait to get home and work on my own garden. All right. Hey, great. Now, I want you to work really hard, okay? Hey, but just in case, you might want to contact your local landscape professional. <laughs> hey, thanks a lot for being on, Kelly. See you later. things that I love about this garden is that it's fire resistant yet it's filled with color and beauty. Look at these wonderful plants. You know this is Dorichnium Little Leo and it really does come on like a lion in the spring. And look at that Lamium. They call that dead nettle. You can grow that in the driest shade on earth and it'll just thrive. And oh la la. Look at the beautiful pruning on this tree. Now that reminds me that, you know, just like in the city, if you live in the forest, you've gotta be careful you prune your trees right. So it might be worth it to contact your local certified arborist for some help on a project like this. The worst thing you could do is prune a plant wrong, the damage lasts for years. Boy, I just love this garden. Look at that spectacular trolleus. It's hard to believe that's in the buttercup family, but that's not gonna spread all over your garden like a buttercup, don't worry. And you know, you can't tell yet, but this campanula will be covered with blue flowers all summer long. Oh, the combination, woo, uh-oh. Look at this. You know, one of the things, when you live right by the woods, by the forest, you're gonna get wildlife. And it's wonderful, you get to enjoy seeing foxes and all kinds of deer running through your garden. They can cause a little trouble. Well, guess what? Monsieur Moose has been here. <laughs> I can see where it just ripped this branch off. So I guess you gotta pay a price, a little damage now and then, but isn't it worth it? Wouldn't you love to have a moose in your front yard? <laughs> Don't touch that dial or all the sprouts will fall off your Brussels sprouts. Hi, I'm here with Deb Logan, community firewise rep for Eagle's Nest Community, a beautiful place in Washington here. <laughs> and you folks have done a lot of great things to make your community more resistant to wildfire. Well, Shelter Bay really made us realize that we needed to do more. We, they got involved with FireWise first, and then we became involved as a community. So the first thing we did was get a community assessment, and we looked at all the individual homes, and then we're looking at our community as a whole. And I imagine it's really important that everybody in the community get involved. If somebody doesn't uh, help make their home more fire resistant, it can impact all of you. Well, and I'm at the top of the hill, so I'm really hoping that everybody below me gets really involved. And I'm <laughs> making sure you. that happens. <laughs> Great, that's terrific. Have you had to do some things to, uh, to your area and your home? Yeah, it really became apparent there was a lot of dead limbs and a lot of, um, I love the lingo, ladder fuel and, and, and stuff that could ignite very easily and, and cause a real big fire. So we became aware of that. And in cleaning out those limbs, you actually improve your view. What could be bad about that? Well, how about that? That's a good point. Wow. So, hey, how did you find out about all of this? Well, the Elliots, whose deck we're sitting on right now, called a meeting with the Fire District 13 to learn more about fire prevention. And at that meeting, I met Mark Titus, the Wildfire Prevention Coordinator. Oh. And Mark is here today. Well, Mark, I can see why these people built this beautiful home on top of this bluff. What a view! But isn't it true that living on top of a bluff does put your home a little bit more at risk of wildfire? 
Uh, yes, it does, Cisco. But um, the good news is, is that homeowners can take steps uh, in, in construction of the, the home itself and preparation of the landscaping around it to really minimize the risk. And that's what these homeowners have done here. So what can people do to help mitigate the possibility of the fire getting to the top of the tree? Well, the obvious answer is, uh, you know, to actually remove the tree uh, if a homeowner is interested in doing so. And in this case, that might be a very uh, desirable option because of the view. The trees are going to keep growing and their tops are going to grow into the view. You've got a perfect so, excuse. <laughs> that's a possibility, yes, Cisco. But um, a lot of times I find people move into these wooded environments because they like the nature, they like the natural uh, environment, so they don't want to remove those trees, and that's okay, too. We can take steps down below, in this case, 100 feet down on the, the cliff side wow. to uh, reduce the ability to, for fire to climb up a ladder of fuels and get into the treetops. What about now we've got this beautiful house here at the top of the bluff. Are there things that the homeowner can do to make it more fire resistant? A absolutely, Cisco. And, and, and why you mentioned fire resistance and, and, and building materials and construction like this, what we want to say is that really nothing is totally fire resistant, right? But all these steps add up to making the, the environment around the home uh, less flammable. And what we're really trying to do is reduce the ability for this structure to ignite. Now, I would guess that the roof has got to be really important because I've learned from you, those embers, they can travel quite a ways and they're going to land on the roof. They'll land on that roof. In this case, the homeowner recognized the, the, the wildfire risk. It's a cement tile. Uh, oftentimes in, in the wooded environment, in the past, we've seen the use of cedar shake roofs. Oh yeah. And you know what that can be. Oh yeah, that's like a cigarette lighter up there, isn't it? Darn near, yep. yeah. Darn near, Cisco. But this homeowner acknowledged the risk and has used a product that is, is really very fire resistant. Again, nothing is totally fire resistant. But this, this product here really minimizes the chance of anything landing on that roof and catching the roof itself on fire. Now what about the deck? We've got a big deck here and it's made out of wood. I imagine if we have, uh, you know, things growing under the deck, that's probably a no-no, huh? Well, that's true, Cisco. And what you have to remember, we're on a bluff and fire moves uphill and this is an open deck below. So where's that heat going to go? It's just going to go right up into the bottom of the deck. So we do two things. We keep it absolutely clean of, of any kind of foliage or any kind of flammable materials. We keep the underside of the deck clean and we keep the uh, the ground uh, with some kind of non-flammable uh, mulch like gravel or or even cement would be an, uh, another option. Great and are there other materials? I know this is wood mm -hmm. and evidently if you keep it clean that's pretty much okay. Are there other materials that are uh, more resistant to fire than wood? Well Cisco there are and I've seen uh, uh, I've seen uh, terracotta tile used on top of a deck. I've seen uh, um, uh, the Trex boards, the, the composite materials that oh, yeah, are that are plastic needed. wood they're making now. They're a compressed plastic, yep. Those work pretty good. But uh, quite honestly, I would talk to a general contractor about other fire resistant materials for decking. Okay, now Mark, I got one more really important question. What about windows? I know they play a role. Yeah, yeah. In this case, of course, the windows are here because of the view. Where's the view coming from? This bluff. And where's the heat source coming from? If the trees torch out. So what they really need to make certain of is that they're using a tempered glass and they're using double pane windows so that they can withstand that initial blast of heat. If those windows survive that initial blast of heat, we're home free. If a window breaks because of it, fire's getting inside the structure and it's game over. Well, uh, you know, now that you mention that, what about the people in the structure? Do they need to know how they're going to get out of there if a fire comes and make sure that the fire engines can get in to work on the fire and make sure they can find your house in the first place? Oh, those are all very good points, Cisco. Um, yeah, community planning and emergency planning is a very important part of this equation. Collaboration with your local fire department is another very important part of this equation. But uh, if, if a community is not not prepared for the uh, event, then it's going to be utter chaos, absolute utter chaos. But if they can, if they can come up with an evacuation plan, if they can re remember that firefighters are going to need to come in and and work around the house safely, um, they can do some things ahead of time and that's really what it's all about. Working ahead of time is so much easier than working during the emergency, isn't it? It sure is and what I've learned here is that it's every little part all works together to help protect your structure and make it more resistant to fire, protect the people who live there and the home. That's correct, Cisco. And really all these integral pieces and parts are very important to, to really 
community protection because this isn't the only home in this community there's homes all across the bluff and they're all here and they all are at the same risk and working together as 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 a community and homeowners is a very important part of, part of the equation as well well mark i've learned a ton today on how to help protect your home make it more resistant to wildfire thanks so much for telling me all about it absolutely. i appreciate it absolutely cisco is your home or vacation home at risk for wildfire? Contact your local fire or forestry department to find out. You may be surprised. Hey, and don't forget to contact your local landscape professional for some great advice on how to make your yard not only more beautiful and functional, but more resistant to a wildfire. Oh la la, yardening is great for the waistline. Get off that couch. Get going. Your mate, neighbors, and a tax assessor will love your home improvements. Oh, la, la. Thanks so much for watching. For more information, log on to wafirewise.net.